Keep yourself in the loop of everything football on the Golden State Media Concepts Football Podcast. The latest news on and off the field, be it college football, Big Ten, SCC, Big 12, Pac-12, ACC, to the NFL. We've got you covered. Listen to the Golden State Media Concepts Football Podcast. The GSMC Football Podcast brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I hope everybody out there is having a wonderful day or night or afternoon. Wherever you are, whatever time it is, and however you're listening, we thank you very much for tuning in. I am your host, as always. You know who it is, Kayvon Izami. And we are super pumped up to be back with you guys for another great episode of the GSMC Football Podcast. Dun, dun, dun. You like that? Hope you guys could hear that, the the tone in my voice there, try and make it really dramatic. It's been a great week. It's been a great weekend. I hope you guys are all sharing that same sentiment. It's Tuesday night at the moment as we record this episode. But as you all know, it will come out Wednesday afternoon, so make sure you tune in while it's hot. Get it while it's hot. This weekend and and the start of this week, we we have just had some really great things going on in the sports world. I mean, uh, sports are fully back, and and it's really been a gift. It really has felt like a gift. So much great stuff going on. The NBA playoffs got underway last night on Monday afternoon. I mean, it's so crazy. I'm sitting here working a um, yesterday, 1.30 in the afternoon on a Monday, and I'm watching the Denver Nuggets versus the Utah Jazz battle it out. Like, that is normally, what, 10.30 their time? Because I'm on the East Coast. So, yeah, that, that would be a 10.30 a.m. game their time. Now, of course, we all know these games are happening in, in Florida in, in the bubble over there, so it doesn't really matter, and I love how the NBA and the NHL are doing those early games because people want to watch. Look, first of all, when you're doing it in a bubble, you can't do all the games at nighttime because a lot of these games are happening on the same court or on the same ice For, for if it was for hockey, if we're talking about here. So you, you can't just do all the games starting at night, you know? So you have to spread it out. But also, it's great for ratings. I mean, I'm sure those 1.30 and those 3.30 games, 4 game, four o'clock games, aren't getting the best ratings as they usually would. But people are willing to tune in. People are dying to, to, to watch sports. And it's just, been, it's just been awesome. It's really been awesome. It feels like April. You know, there's always this question in the sports world where it's like, what's the best sports month of the year you know pandemic aside just normal year what's the best sports month you know you you have march which you get the march you get march madness and and everybody loves march madness and you get the end of the nba season the end of the nhl season you get april which where you usually get nba playoffs nhl playoffs you get the masters Like those are, that's a very big month. And then a lot of people go October because October you get, if you're a big baseball person, you get the World Series, you get the NFL season, you get college football season, and you get the start of NBA and NHL back. So that's the one month where you literally have all the main sports playing together. Um, So so that's always a fun debate to have as, as sports fans. I know me and my friends do that a lot, but This feels like it's April, you know, you have the NBA playoffs, you have the NHL playoffs. The only difference is 
you're about to have in a in NFL and maybe college football, but definitely NFL start up in a couple weeks here. So it's going to be so weird. I was talking with my friends about this the other day. Like we, one of my friends was like, man, did you see how bad the hard knocks ratings were? And I thought about it and I was like, that's weird. People love hard knocks. I love hard knocks. I, I, I watch hard knocks all the time. Why was the hard knocks rating ratings off? What was wrong with them? So I got to thinking about it and it's because there's NHL and NBA playoff games going on right now. I mean, the NFL's never had to compete with that. And vice versa, the NBA and the NHL have never had to compete with the NFL. It's going to be so interesting. And, and some of these, you know, so I know some of you guys don't really care about this, but I'm a huge ratings person. I, I, I love looking and seeing how much did a playoff game, you know, how much buzz did it create? What, what were the numbers on that? What were the numbers on a regular NFL game? You know, usually NFL games come out to be some of the most watched things on TV all year, you know, when you put up everything, whether it's, a, you know, Hollywood shows or big time reality TV shows, doesn't matter. NFL usually stacks up with a lot of games in the top 10 of that year as the highest rating. So it's going to be super interesting to see how do the NFL ratings do when there's, you know, Western Conference NBA playoffs going on or Western Conference NHL playoffs going on or do they not take a hit at all? And is it the NBA and the NHL that take a hit? Those are going to be fascinating to me. Um, I'm just, I'm so happy right now. There's so much good stuff going on in the sports world. It, you know, we still have a pandemic going on out there and, and that sucks and it's awful, but it's really great to see a light come through that right now with, with the way that the NBA and the NHL have been going about things and they really deserve a pat on the back. They, they really do. And especially the the NHL with with the way they are going about this without fans. I mean, I'm not even kidding guys. I turn on my TV and it feels the same. I really do not even notice that there's no fans in there because of the intensity. Because of how hard these players are playing. The music. I mean, they they've done a perfect job with setting this up. Gary Bateman, NHL commissioner, deserves a pat on the back and the NBA's done a great job as well just the NHL playoffs have been more underway, so I've seen how it has been for the actual playoffs. The NBA playoffs are just now getting started, so I'm going to be curious to see how the play is. Does, does the does the play ramp up? You know, how's the music? How are how are the virtual fans? All of that stuff. But by by what the NBA has done so far, that it's going to be amazing from what it looks like because it's been great. So both of those leagues, they really deserve a pat on the back for the things that they have done for us as sports fans during these tough times. And then even the NFL, look, the NFL seeing padded practices happening right now this week have just been awesome. I mean, watching real highlights of these training camps, you know, seeing Tom Brady throw that pass to Mike Evans. I saw Drew Locke hit Noah Fant on that, that deep putt pass that they were showing all over NFL Network. A.J. Terrell, my boy A.J. Terrell, the rookie out of Clemson, lockdown corner, Picked off Matty Ice while guarding Julio Jones. Like, just seeing football back on the field has been such a joy. Such a joy. And, you know, the NFL also deserves a pat on the back so far. And there, there's still a lot to go. But I don't know if you guys have seen this. But there's only been a total of 19 positive COVID-19 tests around the entire NFL. Only 19 positive COVID-19 tests so far. I mean, if you think about that. Right now at this moment, there are anywhere from 70 to 90 players on each team's roster right now because it's training camp. So they're trying to slim it down. There's no preseason games, so they're not cutting players just yet. Like that is a lot of players on each roster. And for there to only be 19 total positive COVID-19 tests in the whole league is, is really saying something. It's remarkable. It's, it's showing that these players are listening. The NFL is listening. They're working together. And I really thought that at the beginning, we would have an onslaught of cases, of positive cases, because everyone's coming back from the summer. Who knows what they've been doing during the summer? Who knows where they've been? So when they all come in, they most likely weren't getting tested. Now when they come in to start getting tested, I thought it was going to be positive, positive, positive all over, like we saw kind of with college football, and then it started to dim down after that. 
But no, I mean, the, these players, they, they are listening. They're doing the right things. The coaches, the, the staff. So to have 19, it's, it's really, really cool to see that. So a lot of great things going on in the sports world. A lot of positive news. Um, really except for one sport and, and that's college football. And, and we're going to have to start there. So to open the show, to kick off quarter number one, we're going to talk more about the recent Big Ten and Pac-12 decision to shut down the college football season, and we're going to dive into what Justin Fields is doing. Ohio State QB Justin Fields is doing something that has the Big Ten, has their eyes open. Let's just put it that way. And we're going to talk about that, and that will take up most of quarter one and two. And then coming out of halftime, we're going to dive into some Dallas Cowboys talk. That's right. I don't know if y'all have heard but Jerry Jones spoke to the media last week, and man, I, I think some—I think the summer heat down in Texas is is getting to him because I have no dang clue what he is talking about. So we will discuss that, and then to end the show, we've got a good one for you. I mean, we've got a real good one to end the show today. Um, I don't know if you guys have heard, but there, there's a rumor going around right now about a news—a new newspaper that has recently come out. That people are loving. It's called the Cave On Times. That's right. You have the New York Times. You have the LA Times. And now you have the Cave On Times. And rumor has it that the Cave On Times prints out hot, hot pressed NFL headlines about the upcoming 2020 season. And for quarter number four, segment number four, I'm going to treat you guys and girls with some hot pressed Cave on Times NFL headlines. So you're going to want to stay tuned to that. But let's first look at college sports. College football is in such an awful situation at this moment. And it all comes back to one thing. College athletics is a train wreck. There is no leadership. There isn't a single voice. It's every man for themselves. It's every conference for themselves. And look, I'm not someone to get into politics. I just don't enjoy talking politics. The conversations, to me, are always irrational. No matter what side you talk about, no matter what you debate, that, that's, just in, that's just my opinion and what I've noticed throughout my years. So in no way am I trying to talk politics here. But look at college football and then look at our country. It's very parallel. You have each state making different decisions about how to handle the virus. Should we wear a mask or should we not? And to answer that, yes, we should. Wearing a mask protects yourself and others. If you go out, just throw one on. It's that simple. But you all should already know that. So each state is making different decisions. There isn't a unified voice. There's no leadership. And that is what we have here for college athletics too. You have five massive conferences that aren't working together at all. The NCAA isn't helping whatsoever, but then again, when do they ever help? You have so many small conferences that are looking up to the Power Five conferences, waiting to see what their decision is going to be so that they can follow that decision. I mean, it's just a flat out mess. And this is what happens. I'm in no shock about any of this. I've been saying this for years. I'm on episode number 14 with this GSMC football podcast, and I've probably told you guys this a hundred times. It just sucks for the players. It really, really sucks for the players. I mean, let's look at the decision the Big Ten made last week, okay? The decision by the Big Ten has been a disaster so far, and it's not because they canceled college football. Like I said last week, I don't think you can debate if canceling the season was the right decision or not. It's the timing and the reasoning. The Big Ten handled this decision as bad as it possibly could. First of all, we still have youth football that is going on right now in most parts of this country. Right here in Raleigh, North Carolina, they have been playing youth football for at least three weeks now. High school football is getting ready to start in a lot of areas and has already gotten started in other areas. And look, by no means am I saying that just because those things are happening, college football should happen? Not at all. I'm not saying it at all because if something awful happens on the high school level, like if a player got really sick and, and God forbid passed away, it would make the news, but it wouldn't be 
the the national headlines. It would be the local news and and possibly get up to the national level. If that happened in college, if a college athlete got sick and God forbid passed away, it would become a national story that would be awful. And and so so it's and that's the liability aspect, all right? That's the liability part that all these conferences are worried about. So I get all that. But I just can't wrap my head around why the decision happened when it did. Let me just walk you guys through some timelines here, okay? On August 6th, Big Ten Commissioner Kevin Warren, who has a son that plays football for Mississippi State, which, as we know, is in the SEC, of course. And as of now, the SEC is still playing. They are allowing those athletes to make a choice if they want to play or not. Well, on August 6th, Kevin Warren who again is the Big Ten commissioner, said he feels confident about the protocols the SEC has and he thinks it's safe for his son to play if he wants to. When someone asked him about how does he feel about his son playing, that's what he said. Well, why does he not feel that way about the athletes in his conference? What happened from August 6th to August 11th when he decided to cancel the season? I want to know. We need transparency. And look, I'm not trying to point the finger at Kevin Warren and blame everything on him. I assume he wasn't the one to make this decision. I assume this came from the Big Ten's medical examiners and presidents of their universities. But I don't know that for sure because we haven't gotten any information. And Kevin Warren is the commissioner. So he is the one that we have to look to at that, this moment. Whether you think that's fair or not, that comes with the job. Just like Roger Goodell, when something bad happens in the NFL, he's the one that takes the blame. He's the commissioner. He's the face of the league. Give us some transparency. More importantly, give your athletes answers. They deserve that at the least. The Pac-12 was transparent. For those who didn't see this, the Pac-12 had doctors and epidemiologists lay out why they were canceling the season, and they provided medical facts And to me, that is perfect. That is what I wanted to hear. They told us they don't think it's safe for their college athletes, and this is why. And they gave us documents on it. And I honestly can't debate that then. And nor should I want to, because they're saying this is not safe for our athletes, and this is why. Now, my personal opinion is that I do think it's more safe for these kids to be on campus with their football team and their coaches than being out there in the world by themselves due to the structure that is provided by these colleges and football programs, due to the medical attention that these athletes receive. I mean, let's look at Oklahoma here, okay? Head coach Lincoln Riley has done a really good job this offseason, in my opinion, with with the way he has handled the virus, the, the, the press conferences, the way he's gone on TV and talked about interviews. He hasn't been one of those coaches that are just pushing football no matter what. He's really talking about the players. He's talking about how much he cares about the players and what he wants to do for those players and how he wants to play, but he wants to keep them safe. So Riley had his players come back to school starting on, to start training on July 1st, okay? They started actually training July 8th after they made sure everyone was negative after their summer off and all that. So from July 8th, to July 29th, a four-week span of practicing and working out and being at the facility every single day, the Oklahoma Sooners had one total positive COVID-19 test during that span. One positive test. Head coach Lincoln Riley then allowed his kids to go home for a week if they wanted to on August 1st because he realized that the schedule was being pushed back there wasn't going to be a home, the, the opening week wasn't going to be August 29th anymore. It was going to be pushed back into September. So he let them go on a break. When the team went on that week break and came back on August 8th, the Sooners had 15 positive COVID-19 tests. So four weeks under the supervision of the coaches, getting tested every single day, watching the players, one positive test the entire time. And then one week gone, away from the structure, away from the organization, away from the program, 15 positive tests come back. It's hard to deny those numbers. 
It just feels like these kids are safer when they are with their football team. That is what I believe. That is my opinion because of everything I just said. But again, that is just my opinion. I am totally fine if these conferences say, no, we are not playing like the Big Ten and Pac-12 already have. But I want them to tell us why. I want them to be transparent. This is the least they could do for their student-athletes. This isn't for me. Do I want college football? Of course I do. I cover the sport. It's great for my job. It benefits me. But I'm also not going to sit here and say, shame on you, Big Ten and Pac-12, for not having a season. No, I understand the significance of the virus. I get how scary it is and how dangerous it can be. And the liability these schools face putting college athletes out the, out on the field that they do not pay. I get all of that. But these athletes have worked their butt off for months and months and months to get ready to play. They grind it. They put in the work. And if there isn't going to be a decision, if there isn't going to be a season, well, then the least you can do is explain to them why. Explain to them step by step why there's no season. Give them documents. Give them physical, tangible information. And that is why we have Justin Fields doing what he is doing. What exactly is Justin Fields doing? Is it going to work? Is the Big Ten going to listen? Let's discuss it right after this break. Stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. Listen up, sports bettors. This is Bryce and Ethan here to tell you about our favorite sports book, and that's Bet US. Football, basketball, and baseball are all back, and that means it's time to get down your bets. We only endorse one sports book, and that's BetUS.com. Why you ask? Bet US is the pioneer in online betting with more than 25 years in the biz. You need a sports book with integrity and longevity, and you need to know that you're going to get paid. That's right, Bryce. You need a sports book that offers everything, including live betting, MMA, golf, horses, esports, entertainment, and all kinds of crazy prop bets and future bets. Don't forget, call today at 1 800 MyBetUS. That's 1 800 MyBetUS, and they will walk you through on getting started. Nobody in the industry gives better bonuses than BetUS. Join now, mention GSMC, and you get up to 150%. And bonuses on your first deposit. Nobody can beat that. We bet at BetUS, so so should you. Join BetUS today. That's BetUS.com or call 1-800-MY-BETUS. Mention GSMC to get 150% in bonuses on your first deposit. Are you looking for help for your fantasy football team? Check out the GSMC Fantasy Football Podcast. Get today's best advice on who to start, who to sit, even who you should draft. From sleeper picks to red-hot lineups, they got it all covered for you. That's gsmcpodcast.com backslash fantasy-football-podcast. We'll cover traditional leagues, dynasty, PPR, even IDP leagues. When you need fantasy help, there's just one show to hit up. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and Follow them on Twitter. Visit gsmcpodcast.com for more info. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This is the GSMC Football Podcast brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. You know who it is, your host, Kayvon Izami. I hope everyone is enjoying the show so far, sitting back with their coffee, having a good listen, and I hope everyone's having an awesome day and an awesome week. 
because as you guys are listening to it, it could be Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So either we're halfway through the week or we're almost there towards the end. Um, you know, I'm, I'm just trying to get back into the swing of things here. Had a week off. We produced a show last Tuesday and then uh, was out of town this weekend. So I didn't do my normal Saturday show. And uh, now we're back here producing a Tuesday. So I had a week off and hopefully you guys missed me. But went to the lake for a nice little lake weekend. Lake Gaston, beautiful, beautiful lake, um, right right on the border of uh, Virginia and North Carolina. It's pretty cool. You know, half of the lake is in Virginia, half of the lake's in North Carolina. Uh, we went up there for my buddy B-Ray's birthday. I think you guys all know B-Ray and Will now. Pretty much talked about them many, many times, the three musketeers we are. I feel like, you know, you guys as an audience can probably just picture who they are. But we had, we had a great weekend up there. You know, weather on Friday was was perfect. We got to take the boat out, the jet skis, all that stuff. Had a had a blast. Saturday the weather wasn't as good, but um it's all right. There was a lot of sports on Saturday, so kind of stayed inside, played some ping pong, you know, crushed some beers, knocked some cold ones back. You guys know how it is. Um uh, on Saturday though, when we when since we didn't have that much, that great of weather, we did do a lot of ping pong and I'll tell you what, I don't know, if, if any of you great listeners are out there, if you guys think you're good at ping pong, please hit me up on Twitter, all right, at, at Kayvon underscore sports, you know where it is, you know how to reach me, hit me up on Twitter, Let, let's battle it out, all right, if you're in the area, or you're ever going to be in the era, area, give me, give me a shout, and we'll, we'll meet up, we'll throw out a pong table, and, and we'll pong it up, and, but I, I'm telling you guys, I'm, give, I'm going to give you a little hint, all right, my forehand is untouchable my forehand I mean I play like I'm playing tennis and I put some nasty spin Woo! so some spin on that ball ping pong it's an underrated sport ping pong is an underrated sport it really is I mean it can be even fun to sit there and watch especially if it's two good players that are able to just kind of like battle it out like serve after serve forehand after forehand my backhand's a little weak. I'll go ahead and give you guys that. My backhand is a little weak. Um, I usually just play with the backhand to keep it in. And then I'll go with the winner on my forehead. So just a little hint for anyone out there that, that comes through the area and wants to challenge me. I'm, I'm going to look forward to it, all right? I've been practicing. I'm going to keep it up. And the, the, the ping pong skills are very, very underrated that I have. Very, very underrated. We are in quarter number two. Remember, coming up in quarter number four, we've got an awesome segment. I think this is going to be one of the best segments we've had coming up in quarter number four. You know, we always like to keep it fun, keep it light for quarter four, do some predictions, do some some type of cool, um, you know, ranking system or list or something like that. Just some typical sports talk radio segment. This one's going to be good. I have a feeling you guys are going to like this one. I took a lot of time to come up with some uh, good headlines for the Kayvon Times that is just, you know, really populating the world everywhere. Just every every newsstand out there. Kayvon Times, front and center, hot and press. Go ahead and grab it. it. It's looking good. It's taken off, all right? I mean, I'm not trying to say we're almost as big as the New York Times and LA Times, but it, the Kayvon Times is taking off, and you're going to want to go grab it while it's hot. Grab it why it's hot because those hot headlines, they're going to burn your hands. They're going to burn your hands, but they're going to burn your hands in a way where you're going to say, "Woo!" that is some type of headline right there. So stay tuned for that. We're going to have a real, real fun segment for that coming up with those headlines of what this NFL, this 2020 NFL season is going to be all about. And, you know, we just finished up talking about the Big Ten, right, and, and and the Pac-12 as well, but but mainly the Big Ten because the Pac-12 has given us some clarity. They have given us some transparency on why they're not canceling the season, and no players or, or parents are fighting back on that. They seem like they're okay with that, and then that's totally fine. The Big Ten is a different situation, you know. The, they went ahead and canceled the season, and it, it just seems like, not very many people are okay with that. The players, the families, the coaches, they want to know why. 
They want to know why. I told you guys last episode, you know, uh, Penn State head coach James Franklin gets on the, comes on ESPN's morning show, get up and says, why? What's the point of making this decision now? Why make it now when no one else is? Let's wait and see what happens. There's no rush. There is no rush. The kid, the other students haven't even got on campus yet. See what happens when the kids get on campus. That's what the SEC and ACC are doing. See if how, how big of an outbreak happens. See if they're not able to control their kids from going and hanging out at parties and, and, and non-athlete parties and, and, and hangout sessions and stuff like that. Are they able to keep these athletes together? Are they, they able to keep the athletes with the athletes and the students with the students? Or is that impossible? If that's impossible, then shut the season down. It does not hurt to wait a little bit longer. If the Big Ten said, we don't want to wait any longer because we feel right away that this is too dangerous, fine, then come out and say it and tell us why. I want to hear from the medical examiners. I want to hear who made the decision. Was it the president's or was it the medical examiners? What did the medical examiners say? The athletes deserve to hear all of this. There should be no secrets during this time. Everything should be out on the table because the players deserve that. The players deserve legitimate answers. And yeah, maybe, guess what? After they get those answers, they still won't be happy, but at least they will get the answers. And that's what they want. And that's why Justin Fields, quarterback for Ohio State University, one of the biggest stars in all of college sports at the moment. I mean, a top five draft pick, a just a big time player, has decided to create a, a petition to get the Big Ten to reverse their decision and to reconsider having a college football season. The petition already had well over 250,000 signatures as of Tuesday morning. I haven't checked since then, but as of Tuesday morning, it was well over 250,000 signatures. So I want to first start by saying this. And, and again, for those that didn't understand that, Justin Fields, Big Ten quarterback, a quarterback of Ohio State University, one of the biggest stars in all of college sports, not just football, all of college sports. I mean, he was he was going to be a Heisman favorite. He was going to be my pick to win the Heisman this year. He took his team to the – he transferred over from Georgia last season – took his team to the um, college football playoff where he battled it out with Clemson. And and they, they almost won. They, they lost by, by just towards the end of the game. But he is a really good player. And he decided to create a petition to get the Big Ten to reverse their decision of canceling the college football season. So I want to start by saying this. I want to give a shout out to Justin Fields. A shout out to realizing, a shout out for realizing his power. A shout out to, for realizing who you are and what you can do, even though you're just in college, even though you're just a college student athlete. And I put quotes around that, of course. A shout out for understanding that you're a top QB at one of the best programs in the world, and that means something. So you should use it. Justin Fields is showing leadership. He's showing leadership that hasn't been shown throughout the conferences. Throughout the Big Ten Conference. Throughout the universities themselves. Justin Fields, the college player, is showing the leadership. Justin Fields is showing so much maturity and is fighting to play when he really doesn't even need to. I mean, he doesn't need to play. He is already locked in, locked in to a top five NFL draft pick next year, whether he plays this year or not. The best he can do if he played this season is lock up the number two pick overall. Because even if he had the best college football season ever, it wouldn't matter. He's not going number one. Trevor Lawrence has already has that locked up for Clemson. So Fields is already locked into a top five pick 
which means he is locked into making millions and millions of dollars this coming April, even if he doesn't play this season. And he is still fighting. A lot of players in that situation would say, I don't even need this college football season. All I have to do is train and stay healthy, and I get millions and millions of dollars come April. I mean, that sounds like a pretty sweet deal, and it sounds safer to do that in terms of injury-wise than actually having a college football season. But no, he is still out there fighting, and he's clearly not doing it for himself. He's clearly doing it for others. He's standing up and realizing he's a quarterback. But he's not just a quarterback. He's a really good quarterback for one of the biggest programs in the entire country in Ohio State. People listen to those players. So he's going to stand up for my teammates. He's going to stand up for his friends at other programs. Stand up. For those that aren't good enough to make the NFL, but a good senior year could change that, like Joe Burrow last year. He's standing up for players that don't have the voice that he has. He's saying, my teammates worked hard enough. My left tackle is a senior this year, and he's not going to get to finish his college football season or maybe his career as a football player if he doesn't play. It's over. It's done. That's a hard pill to swallow. So you really have to applaud Fields for understanding the power he has and using that power the way he is right now. It really is remarkable. It's admirable. Now, with all that being said, the question becomes this. What should the Big Ten do now? Should they reserve excuse me, should they reverse their decision just because of this uh, petition by the most famous player in their conference? The answer is no, with capital N-O. The Big Ten should not reverse their answer. They should not take back their decision to cancel the football season because of this this petition. Let's get that straight. I'm saying because of this petition that Justin Fields has started that has 300,000 plus signatures on it by now and is, is being talked about everywhere, they should not listen to that. They should not listen to Justin Fields. Now listen, listen quickly here, okay, or carefully, please. I've been saying for years now that these schools and these conferences need to listen to their student-athletes. And now, when a student-athlete is finally using his platform in the right way, I'm telling the schools and the conferences to not listen to him. It sounds like I'm all over the place, right? It's confusing. That's okay, because this is not the time to do it. This is not the topic to listen to an athlete about. Should you care that these players want to play? Of course you could. Should these conferences and schools have been listening to these com- these players For years on years, yes, they should have. They should have. But not for this topic. Should you care that these players want to play? Of course you should, and that's why they deserve real reasoning and answers on why they aren't playing. But these are 18, 19, 20-year-old kids. Of course they want to play. Think back to when you were a kid. You know for damn sure all you wanted to do back then was go, go, go. We didn't think about our actions back then. We just wanted to play. So unless the 250,000 plus signatures are all from different epidemiologists or medical examiners, then heck no, you can't change your decision based on this petition. If If the Big Ten's entire message is that they don't feel like it's safe enough for these athletes to play... Well, you can't tell me it's safer now just because a player started up a petition that is getting a lot of noise. That's nonsense. The Big Ten is not playing football this year because the players didn't want to play. They're not playing 
football because the coaches don't want to coach. You're not playing football because the parents didn't want their kids to play. No, they're not playing football because they said it was not in the best interest of the student athlete's health. That's why there's no football in the Big Ten this year. Has nothing to do with Justin Fields saying he wants to play. It has nothing to do with Ryan Day, head coach of Ohio State, coming out and saying, we want to play. Or Nebraska's head coach, Jim, or, or uh, Michigan's head coach, Jim Harbaugh, coming out and saying, we want to pray, uh, play. Nebraska's head coach, Scott Frost, saying, we want to play. James Franklin's, uh, James Franklin, Penn State's head coach, saying, we want to play. P- Justin Fields saying, and sa- starting a petition saying, we want to play. None of that matters when it comes to this decision. It matters for them to get answers. That matters. It matters to be transparent with them. It matters to let them know if they're going to actually have a chance to play a spring season. If there will be no fall season. The Big Ten would be completely undermining their decision and would look absolutely ridiculous if they flip their decision because of this. So again, I love, love, love what Justin Fields is doing. I really do. It's admirable, it's courageous, but nothing can happen here. It just can't. And I've even heard some people say, well, well, look at some of the big names that have signed this petition. You have Herschel Walker, and they even tagged the President of the United States in it. No, it does not matter. None of that matters. Because there was no leadership from the start. There was no leadership from the overall Big Ten. There was no leadership from Ohio State. I didn't hear anything of I didn't hear anything from the athletic director speaking out. When you make a decision like this, there is no going back based off of a petition by an athlete who is 18, 19, 20 years old. Unless the medical examiners, unless the epidemiologists say you can take that decision back because it's safe. Well, then you can take the decision back. But once again, we better see the information on that if that was to happen. The Big Ten told us this is an educated decision that took time and a lot of experts. I would love for these college athletes to be heard. I really would. But unfortunately, this isn't the topic for that to happen. It's just not. If you sit here and say, because a petition got 300,000 signatures on it, well, then we have to make a decision. Well, if that's the case, then I guess Justin Fields should go and make another petition and say, our college football players should get paid. If that gets 400,000 signatures, can can that happen too? Because I'll, I'll, I'll try and get that started myself. I'll DM him him 100 million times to say, until he answers to say, start that petition. I mean, come on. We're we're talking crazy here. Again, it's amazing what Justin Fields is doing. It really is. It shows he's aware. It shows he's smart. It shows he understands what's going on. He's reading. He's learning. He's listening. He knows his power. And he's not scared to use it. That's a big thing. A lot of these players are scared to use it, especially when they're in that position to get taken by the NFL. But to me, if I'm a GM of an NFL team, if I'm an owner of an NFL team, if I'm a head coach of an NFL team that's going to need a quarterback next year, this guy just jumped up my board even farther because of what he did here. Smart, smart kid. But this cannot happen Because of this petition. The Big Ten made a decision to cancel the season. And they better stick by that decision. But give us some answers why. Give us some answers why. And if for some reason the decision was flipped. It better be because your medical examiner said it's okay. And we need to see that information as well. I know it sounds like if you're not really listening that I'm jumping all over the place here, but I'm not. It's very simple, guys. It's very simple. I want college football to happen 
as long as it's safe for these student athletes. If it's not safe, deemed by epidemiologists and medical examiners and nobody else, I don't care what the commissioners say. I don't care what the presidents have to say. I don't care what the athletic directors have to say. I want to hear from professionals in the medical field. If they say it's not safe, then cut the season. It's not safe. But let us see them say that. Let us hear them say that. Put the name on who said it. And let us see the quote or hear the quote. And if it is safe to say, then the same, if it is safe to play, then I want to see the same thing. I want to hear them say it's safe to play. I want to see them say it just like the, the um, epidemiologist at Duke. He came out and said, in my opinion, it is safe for them, for the ACC to play football. And he gave us reasons on reasons why. The Pac-12 gave us reasons on reasons why it's not safe based on their medical examiners, talking about their situation in their region. The Big Ten needs to now tell us about their situation in their region. This is the GSMC Football Podcast. I'm your host, Kayvon Izami. We're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, it's time to dive into some real NFL topics here, baby. Some real NFL topics. There was a player on Seattle that was let go for doing some <laughs> some things that you just can't write some of this stuff up. We're going to dive into that, and we're also going to talk some Jerry Jones and the Dallas Cowboys. And I'm telling you guys, you want to stay tuned to hear what I have to say about that. We'll be right back just after this break. Check out the show that's built on the MMA. From the UFC to extreme cage fighting, they got the fights covered. Check out the GSMC MMA podcast. Get the latest news on past or upcoming fights. Join us as we talk to and about some of the biggest names in the MMA, past, present, and future. When it's the fight game, there's just one show to check out. GSMCpodcast.com backslash MMA dash podcast. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit G. GSMCpodcast.com for more info. back ladies and gentlemen coming out of halftime i hope everybody's having a lovely day entering quarter number three segment number three halfway through the show remember stay tuned because we are one segment away coming up in court in quarter number four segment number four you know we like to break it down uh like a football game this is a football podcast the gsmc football podcast I am your host, Kayvon Izami, and um, coming up in segment number four, what we're going to do is we are going to bring out a little newspaper time for you guys, a little he- newspaper headlines brought to you by the Kayvon Times. That's right. You know, there's a new newspaper out. It's hot off the press. You're going to want to follow it. And these, this, this newspaper called the Cave on Times, who does it have some good headlines about the 2020 NFL season? So definitely stay tuned for that. Um, and, and, you know, we, we just finished talking about, as we went into halftime here, what Justin Fields is doing. And, and, and I went through, you know, over and over because it, he, he deserves the credit here. He deserves, um, to be, mentioned about his leadership, his courage, the ability of him using his power when he knows that this could backfire on him. 
it, he he could this could hurt him in a negative way it, um because it just doesn't happen college football players in the past have not used their platform and their power to stand up and and, and you know tell the world what's going on or, and, and just speak because they're college players right they're student athletes we don't put them in that category as professionals because they don't get paid even though they bring in so much money to the sport sometimes these college players have a bigger platform than even pro players do and Justin Fields is one of those players that does that he has a platform he is a top five pick he is a superstar quarterback and when he talks people will Listen, they will. So what does that mean? It means that he's stepping up and doing the right thing. Now, is it going to work? No, it's not because it would be a joke for the Big Ten to take back this serious decision over a petition that's signed by 300,000 people who we have no clue who they are. Half of them could be internet trolls that we see on Twitter every day for all we know, right? Unless these 300,000 signatures are coming from epidemiologists, are coming from legit medical examiners, then there's no weight in this petition. But these these conferences, the Big Ten commissioner, the presidents, the athletic directors, they do need to start listening to these student-athletes as we move forward in college sports. And I love that Justin Fields is setting that example. I do. Because remember, he has everything to lose. He has nothing to gain here. What? If he goes out in a 2020 season this year, if if they they were to play, let's say, and has an amazing season, okay, maybe that locks him into the number two pick. But he's probably going to be the number two pick overall anyways, depending on who gets the number two pick in the NFL draft. If it's a team that needs a quarterback, then Justin Fields is going number two, right behind Trevor Lawrence. If a team that doesn't need a quarterback at number two, then he's going to go to the next team that needs a quarterback, and that's going to be at least the number three, number four, number five. He will not drop out of the top five in this coming NFL draft. He just won't. So him standing up like this, you know, he has everything to lose. He has nothing to gain, but he's doing it for his teammates. He's doing it to stand up for those that aren't going to go to the NFL or those that needed one more year, one more big year to really solidify their chance of getting an NFL spot. That's what he's doing. And that means so much to me. And I really hope it means a lot to these general managers and these owners and these coaches that are making these decisions in the league because it should. It really, really should. So I respect him. He's courageous, and that is awesome, but I can, at the end of the day, the Big Ten cannot use this to switch their decision. They made their decision because they said it's not safe for the players. They have to stick by that decision, and the only way that changes is if the medical examiners and the epidemiologists and the people that are professionals in the health field come out and tell us that it's safe. That's the only way they can change this decision. This is the GSMC Football Podcast. I am your host, Kayvon Izami, coming at you from the great studios of my bedroom in Raleigh, North Carolina, as always. And a big thank you to everyone out in uh, the studios in California, the GSMC Podcast Studios that are doing an awesome job hosting this show. We, We appreciate it in this show. As I always say, because it's always true and it always needs to be mentioned, would be nothing without you and without the great listeners and all of you listening out there. So what I want to get into now, I don't know if you guys have seen this, um, but Kamal Siver, Siverin, and I, I might be pronouncing that wrong, but I hope I'm not. It's a Kamal Siverin, which is, who is an undrafted rookie cornerback out of Oklahoma State, was released Tuesday night in a move that gained little notice at the time. On Thursday, though, when we learned 
why he was released, and this was last Thursday, by the way, which unsurprisingly then began to generate a lot of noise. Now, he was released by the Seattle Seahawks, so he was an undrafted rookie this year coming out of Oklahoma State, a cornerback, and he was, and he, the Seattle Seahawks took him after the draft as an undrafted rookie, like I said, free agent, and they released him. They released him because Siverin, a rookie cornerback, got caught on video trying to sneak a female visitor, so a, a lady, into the team hotel. The woman was wearing Seahawks gear in attempt to disguise her as a player. I mean, you cannot write this stuff up. This, this is too funny. And I really don't know if like I should be making a joke out of this or if I should be taking this serious because at the end of the day, it, it's, it's funny because, you know, he's trying to sneak a lady up to his room and you, you got to give him props for that. I mean, he wants to, he wants to have his girl over or a friend over or whatever. Maybe it's just, you know, a girl he met. Who who knows? You know, I'm trying to not get in trouble here by saying any anything bad, but who knows what it was? But it, it's it, the optics of it are funny, but also the optics of it are bad. You know, so it because he could get his team sick. He could he could ruin the season for the Seahawks. It's that easy. I just don't get what was in his head though. Like you're an undrafted free agent. And you risk your chance at guaranteed money. I mean, we're talking six figures here if you make the team. And, and you just throw that away because you couldn't hold off, you know, hanging out with this girl or getting some action or whatever was going to happen. Uh, you couldn't hold off. And then and then the worst part is, like we said, you could have put your team at risk. It's that easy with this virus. If you didn't get caught and she comes up to your room. And she has the virus, and then you get it. And then you go to practice the next day, and you're shaking hands and, and, and talking close with Russell Wilson. Boom. That that could be done for the first week of the Seahawks game right there. You know? So so that that's what I'm saying. Like, you got the, – the, these players have to think. And he's a rookie. He made a mistake, and hopefully he'll get another chance. It might not be this year, but hopefully in, in the following years he'll get another chance. But I have to applaud the Seahawks on this. They got out in front of it. They didn't say, hey, don't let it happen again. We'll give you one more chance, then you're out. No, nah, they showed the team right off the bat that this time, this year, this stuff won't be allowed. And look, I'm someone that always is for second chances. You know, if someone messes up, I'm always for them, them getting a second chance. This year, though, is different because so many teams helped, so many players their health is on the line, right? You know, coaches, players, players, staff, all these, everyone's health is on the line. You cannot screw up in a pandemic by making dumb decisions. You just can't. That, that, that's something that will completely, that could completely come back and bite you. And it's not worth that risk. So in cases like this, I'm not, I, I am glad the Seahawks made an example out of them. It sucks. But they made an example so they're showing the team, hey, this isn't going to work out. These shenanigans are not going to work out this year. Because say they let them off the hook. Say they, they don't cut them. Well, then that tells other players, players that are have more cachet, players that are not undrafted rookies, players that have more cachet and, and, and big contracts to say, man, if an undrafted rookie got away with this, psh, I can I can go out to bars, I can go out to nightclubs, and I won't get cut. You, you see what I'm saying? That's a bad example. The Seahawks had to get out in front of this, and they had to do this, and I'm sure the league is seeing this as well, and it's giving notice to other teams and other players on how to handle these situations. It is, and, and every team is going to have to go about this this way. Every team. It's just going to have to be that type of season where it's my way or the highway. It's follow the rules, and that's it. That's just how the season is going to be, and, and players should understand that. And, and I think most of the players want to abide by those rules. I really do, because so far, the NFL has done a great job. They really have. Like I said in the opener, only 19 positive COVID tests 
That is an extremely impressive number for the amount of people in the NFL. Can it stay up, though? Can that, can that keep going? Can this positive trend uh, of doing the right thing, following the right rules, is that something that these players and, and the league can keep going? That's the question now as we get into the season. So this is, this is what I wanted to bring up here. Now, you guys remember a couple weeks ago, I talked about how the NFL should essentially do 32 different bubbles, right? Each team has their own bubble. And essentially, we said that on this show, and, and it looks like that that's how it should be. You know, I said each team will have – you can't do a, a, a big bubble for the whole NFL. You just, it's impossible. So I said each team should have their own bubble. Well, it looks like the league might be listening. I mean, Roger Goodell, I appreciate it. I really do. It looks like the Saints and the Cowboys, they might be listening. Not sure why the Saints are, but I guess not really sure why the Cowboys are either. But I think they might be because it looked, it all started with a couple weeks ago. The New Orleans Saints said that they're going to do a bubble within their own team. They decided to do the hotel thing that I was talking about. They bought off five floors in a hotel so that their players can go there after practice to feel safe. Now, I talked about renting out the whole hotel, but if they're going to do four, five floors, that's fine. They just have to make sure that they're, they're protecting those five floors. And, and now we started seeing the Dallas Cowboys do it. And, and, you know, it's interesting. And I think I told you guys this before, but on the Atlanta Falcons campus, they have dorms, not for, you know, for that because there's a college there, but they just have old dorms that they're there. So they're able to isolate like they're at a, at a legit training camp situation, even though they're at home, you know, which is unique. And so they probably have somewhat of a bubble themselves where guys don't need to leave. We saw this, just like I said, with the New Orleans Saints that are doing this at the beginning of the season with the hotel thing. And now the Cowboys are. This is so smart. It really is a great plan. We know that bubbles work. We know that bubbles work. We've seen it with the NBA. We've seen it with the NHL, where both leagues have had zero positive cases in the for, for a couple weeks now. We saw with MLS, who was also in a bubble down in Florida, they, they were able to finish their MLS's back tournament. We saw it with the WNBA, who's also in a bubble right now, and they've been doing a great job. I even believe the Premier League lacrosse is doing it in their bubble, and they didn't have any positive cases. You know, like I said, the NHL has two cities up in Canada. They have not had any positive cases in their bubble. The bubble works. And for the NFL to do one big bubble or a couple of bubbles, that's impossible. There's just no way for them to do that. There's no possible way for the NFL to do that. We have talked about this many times. Or, or even an entire division or conferences. You just, you cannot do that in different cities. It's, it's impossible to keep all those teams isolated in one location like that. There's too many people to manage and to take care of and too many people to test. It's just too much and it doesn't make sense. But if you're going to do it, to do this on a small scale inside for your team and you know, you guys are being smart about going out, wearing masks, washing your hands having the antibacterial gel and all that stuff, then I think this is the only way to do this. And I'm surprised that we haven't heard that other teams are taking this type of philosophy, even if it's expensive to do it. What if what, you basically have, you basically have to take over an entire hotel or at least four or five, six floors of a hotel if you don't want to pay for the entire hotel depending on the money these owners want to spend. But again, what have I been saying to, 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 to my great listeners all this pandemic? What have I been saying? Come on, you guys know. If you want to make sports work, you can't spare any expense. You cannot be cheap. You can't. You have to be full steam ahead with this. But think about like your like your your life at home, okay? You know the non-athletes. You know the mom or the dad or the business owner who forced who's forced to work from home. If you're smart and doing it the right way, and we encourage everybody to continue being smart and aware about what's going on with this virus, even though it's been five months or so in, since we all started universally staying at home and being safe, it's all about the people and the circles that you keep 
that you hang out with during this time. So, so, so for instance, at first I didn't go out at all. I, I stayed with my family and, and my girlfriend, but as things started to loosen up a bit, I have about two or three friends that I've seen here and there as I went. And, and of course, when I see them, I'm smart about it and, and they are smart about it. You know, we social distance, we wear masks. We make sure we don't go hang out with a bunch of people, random people in between when we all hang out. And, and for athletes, it has to be the same way. We always say for athletes that we're just, as we always say, a small sample of society at large, right? A microcosm of what goes on is the same things that affect athletes. And bubbles are, are outside of bubbles. It's the same thing that affects the regular person, you know, in America, and so the fact that the Cowboys and the Saints are doing this, it's great. It tells you that just like everyone else that's scared about and nervous about this virus, athletes are too. Organizations are too. They don't know exactly what could happen. You're scared, but you want to play, of course. You want to be a part of this $15 billion business and earn a great salary and build a name for yourself and enrich your family and all those other things but not at the cost of risking your life. So this is a no-brainer to me. And I'm really shocked. I have not seen more teams move in this direction yet. I'm really shocked about that. And I hope by next week, I think that, I, that we might see all the teams try and do something like this because it's that smart. And I, and I hope I'm right. And as, as the other major sports have shown us that are operating right now, this works. The bubble works. You even see baseball talk about how they are thinking about doing a bubble for the postseason. So nothing comes up then. Everyone is trying to do a bubble one way or the other. This is a no-brainer. I know the Cowboys and the Saints are doing it. I'm pretty sure we're going to see more teams do this as well because it just makes too much sense. And teams and organizations would be stupid if they, if they don't go this route. Don't make the mistake because it's too expensive. Don't put your team and your players in that situation. If you want to win and have a good, long, healthy season, key words there, long, healthy season, then you have to do this right. You have to do this right. Don't be cheap. Follow what is happening. I said it weeks ago, guys. You got my, my great listeners, you can attest to this. I came on here and said they should do 32 different bubbles. One team has a bubble. They, they have their own hotel. If they want to do half the hotel, four, five, six, seven floors, that, that's fine too. Just make sure they're protecting those floors, protecting the players as they go in and out. But if they want to do that, you know, and then they they go straight from the hotel to the practice field, straight from the hotel. To the, to, to the game field, straight from the hotel to the airport. That, that's all they do. They room service in the, food, in, the, in the hotel when they're there and eat at the facility when they're not. It's that simple. It's simple. Simplicity works during a pandemic. It's a bubble in the NBA, and it's working. It's a bubble in the NHL, and it's working. This is the smart way to go. I'm so happy the Saints and Cowboys are on top of it. And I really, really hope other teams start to follow along as soon as possible because we are really nearing towards the end of the season. This is the GSMC Football Podcast. I am your host, Kayvon Izami. And we are now going to take a quick break. And when we come back, it is time to dive into quarter number four, segment number four. The Kayvon Times is up, and what headlines are hot on the press? Stay tuned right after this. 
to check out the show built around the women of MMA. From the UFC to the extreme cage fighting, we got the fights covered. Listen. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Women's MMA Podcast. The latest news of upcoming fights, discussions of previous matches. Join us as we talk to and about the biggest names in women's mixed martial arts, past, present, and future. When it's the women's fight game, you know where to listen to the Golden State Media Concepts Women's MMA Podcast. back ladies and gentlemen this is the gsmc football podcast coming to you down the stretch quarter number four i like to think that we have a big lead we're doing well and ready to end it and get another dub on the season what do you guys think how how have we been how have things gone i hope everyone's enjoying the show as always hit me up on twitter at kvon underscore sports you can also hit us up on the company page at gsmc GSMC underscore football and bring us all the notes and love and compliments and complaints um critiques whatever you name it let us know and and as always i will read it out as i have before um whether it's a compliment or, or a critique because i like them both and i accept both with open arms uh i can only this show can only get better if i hear from you guys what you like, what you don't like, and, and we go from there. So, coming down to quarter number four, I hope you guys have enjoyed it all. Um, as, as we just finished up quarter number three, we talked the NFL and you know how they're doing right now during the, the first couple weeks of August. Really, now last couple weeks of August, about 10 days left. I think 10 work days left, uh, or maybe a little less actually, in August, and then we're getting into September. I mean, it's crazy to think about it. If you guys have your, uh, you know, fantasy football going on, the, the drafts are starting to happen, and hopefully you're drafting with for depth because you never know what's going to happen with the virus. But it's exciting times. It, it really is. And, and we just see it. The bubble works. So it makes sense to do the bubble. It works. It works. Why not do it? The Saints are right. The Cowboys are right. I am right. You listeners are right because we said it on this show before anyone started doing it. And you know, Roger Goodell listens. He, he's he got to be listening. You're welcome, Roger. Don't worry. You don't need to credit me. It works. Do the bubble because it works. There's no other reason around it. There's just no other reason around it. So, What we're going to do now, quarter number four, like I've been telling you guys, the Kayvon Times, the top headlines on the the hottest newspaper out. That's right, the Kayvon Times for the 2020 NFL season for specific teams. And we're going to get to that in just a minute. We're going to get to that in just a minute. Before we get to that, there's 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 actually two things that, two quick topics here that I want to tackle. The first is the, the Dallas Cowboys, all right? I don't know if you guys have seen this. This actually happened, started last week. And um, it, it started last week. To be honest, I really wanted to talk about it last week. But because I was gone, I, was, I wasn't I was here on Saturday, which, you know, as I said, I was at the lake, which is another thing. Reach out to me on Twitter, at Kvon underscore sports. What we talked about, are you a lake or a beach person? You can even throw mountains in there as well. You know, we mainly talked about lake and beach, but but are you a lake or beach person? And if so, why? You know, that that that's the debate we have to talk about here. Um, and, and I hope you guys enjoyed that and had some fun with that as we just talked about. But what we're going to do before we dive into the Cave on Times, we're going to look at what Jerry Jones talked about last week. And it was, it was really funny to see because 
as I said, I did want to talk about it, but since I was out, I, I just feel like I really want to bring it up quickly here. And hopefully you guys saw this, but Jerry recently came out and said, and, and I'm paraphrasing here, but he pretty much came out and said that because of the times that we're in, you know, with the pandemic and, and, and so many people unemployed and so many people unemployed, you know, not not knowing where they're going to get their next paycheck, if they're going to get their next paycheck, when they're going to be able to go back to work, all that sad stuff. You know, he pretty much said, what's going to, I don't want to be someone that's going to shell out generational type money during this time. It, it, he's pretty much, and I paraphrase him, but he's pretty much saying it's bad optics. It's bad logistics to do something like that, <laughs> which is just, I don't even know how to start with this. There's so many funny and just, just like, come on, Jerry. How do you even go about this? Okay, so did I really hear Jerry Jones, someone who owns a team that is worth $5 billion at the least, say that this is not a good time to be talking about general generational wealth? Did I really hear that? Jerry Jones is generational wealth. I mean, Jerry Jones, whenever you speak, you're generational wealth. And remember, this is the first time we've heard Jerry Jones speak all summer. You know, he, he hasn't talked. It's been the off season. He hasn't talked. And he was obviously talking about Des- Dak Prescott's contract, right? So he comes out and says that he didn't want to – it looked bad. It was bad optics to sign Dak Prescott because – the, the, it's This is generational wealth we're talking about, and, and there's families out there that don't have jobs and stuff like that. Jerry, you are generational wealth. Anytime you speak of money, you're talking about generational type money. And that's the game you deal in. You're Mr. My Hands Don't Cramp Up When I Write Checks. You've said that millions of times. You have made a lot of people extremely rich all- all the time. I mean, you've made many, many people rich. Any time of year, no matter what, no matter what is going on. And Jerry Jones is not going to get on TV right now when it comes to paying Dak Prescott and say he's not ta- paying him because of generational money. Because that's not how he moves. He is lying. But when you don't have a reason for not signing your franchise guy... When you don't feel like answering those questions, now you decide to become conscious. Now you become aware of what's going on in society, but you weren't aware about what's going on in society when people were trying to figure out where their next meals were coming from. I'm sorry, and I don't mean to laugh at that. That's a really serious thing. It's just mind-blowing how Jerry went about this. Jerry, you drafted on your yacht. You literally sat in your yacht during the NFL draft in April, this past April, and drafted CeeDee Lamb and the other players on your yacht. But right now is not the time to be talking about generational money. But every time you step to the mic, no matter what, there is generational on generational on generational money. Your grand, 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 grandkid, probably named Jerry the 10th, will have generational money because of you. So don't try and tell us that you didn't sign Dak Prescott Because it looks bad during these times. But then you go and draft on a yacht. You just weren't trying to be Mr. Checkbook this time. You weren't trying to be my hands don't cramp when I write checks this time. You weren't trying to open up that checkbook this time, Jerry. And you know why you weren't? Because you didn't want to sign Dak to the money he wants. You didn't want to give him that type of money. Because you're not sold on him. You're not sold on him one single bit. Don't try and use this pandemic as an excuse. It's baloney. It's full on baloney. Don't try and do it. Do not try and do it. Come on, Jerry. Come on, man. You are out of your mind trying to do something like that. Only you, Jerry. Only you. Look, I love Jerry. I I think he's a good owner. I think he's... Definitely gets in his way sometimes and has gotten his way when it comes to wanting to win a Super Bowl so bad instead of, you know, hiring someone that, that can do the general manager job. But in the past recent years, he deserves credit. He's he's given some of the reign to his son. 
Stephen Jones, and and he, Stephen has done a good job. So, but but Jerry, come on, man, you are Mister Hands. Don't cramp when you open up your checkbook. All right, when you sign checks, don't go there and try and say you're worried or you didn't want to sign Dak because it's bad optics because this is generational money. Was it bad optics that Kansas City signed Patrick Mahomes? No. Because they wanted Patrick Mahomes signed. And you better believe if you had Patrick Mahomes, you would have signed him in a heartbeat and you probably would have paid more. Come on, Jerry. Don't give us that. Don't give us that. This is the GSMC Football Podcast. Kayvon Izami at your helm. Coming down the final stretch of the game here. Hope everyone's had an awesome day. Hope everyone's loving the podcast. Wherever you are, however you're listening, we appreciate it as always. Uh, So, come on. Like, just one last time I gotta say it. Jerry, you're better than that, man. You're better than that. The, the, The sayings is just, come on. And then also, Dak Prescott. Guys, I don't know if you guys have heard or listened to Dak Prescott he is a politi- He has a career in politics after he finishes the NFL. He really does. I mean, he talks, but I don't know what he's saying. Like, he really does. It's just, like, it's so professional. He's saying all the right things, and his mouth is moving, but I, it, it, he's really not saying anything. It, it's very impressive the way that Dak Prescott knows how to handle these situations. Um, that's just something I want to say but, say. but now let's get into the segment number four, the main segment. What you guys are all here to listen to, the Cave on Time. So what we're going to do here is, you know how we have it. We have the New York Times. We have the LA Times. And now we have the Cave on Times. The Cave on Times is a hot newspaper that has recently taken over the world. People are all around waking up in the morning, going to their newsstand, going to their grocery store, going to wherever you can buy newspapers now, and they're trying to get a piece of the Cave on Times. Because what is on this Cave on Times are 2020 NFL headlines for certain NFL teams. And I'm telling you, people want to read about these headlines. So let's get into it, huh? For the first headline about the Cleveland Browns 2020 NFL season is open for business, Baker needed. That's right, open for business, Baker needed. Hey, a Baker is needed because the Baker Mayfield we all know in Cleveland just hasn't showed up for the second year in a row. There are no more excuses. Last year, it was a sophomore slump. Last year, it was, oh, he has an awful coach in Freddie Kitchens. This year, if Baker doesn't show up, the Browns will have a problem. Baker will officially be on the hot seat. When you have players, star players, like Odell Beckham Jr., Jarvis Landry, Nick Chubb, and Austin Hooper, Kareem Hunt. I mean, this is one of the best offenses in the league. I can just go on and on. On paper, this offense is stacked. So who's the real Baker Mayfield? Is it the one that uh, balled out during the second half of his rookie season? Or is it the one that we saw all last year? That's the question. Look, I want Baker to succeed. I really do. And he has had some tough situations his first couple years. Three different head coaches already. That's not easy for any QB to succeed. I don't care who you are. But now those excuses aren't going to be used anymore. Whether that's fair or not, That's just how the NFL works. It's a win-now league. And with the talent Baker has at his disposal, you got to produce. you got to win. And unfortunately, I don't see that happening. Baker needed in the dog pound. Second headline for the Cave on Times. Dak, Dak, Goose. Dak doesn't play up to the Cowboys, what the Cowboys are looking for. He just doesn't. We have talked about it at nausea, at nausea, about the Cowboys and Dak Prescott's contract situation. We all know the situation they are in. Look, Jerry Jones can tell us whatever he wants, but at the end of the day, he didn't do the one thing he always says he's going to do, and that's open his checkbook and sign the contract. 
He didn't do it because he doesn't have full faith in Dak yet. He wants to see one more season. He wants to see Dak take him deep into the playoffs. And then he can justify to himself paying him the massive amount of money that Dak wants. Unfortunately, or maybe fortunately, depending on who you ask and how you look at it, Dak isn't going to do what Jerry is looking for. Dak isn't going to ball out. The numbers will be there. The yards and the touchdowns, they will be there. The stats will look massive, just like last year. But it's not going to create wins. And for Dak to get that type of contract that he wants, you don't have to just win games. You have to win meaningful games. Games against teams with winning records. Playoff games. And I don't see that happening. And if it doesn't happen with the amount of talent that Dallas has on that team, it's going to be very interesting how teams look at him. Look, some teams will sign him. There, Of course, there's no doubt about it. Some teams will still pay him the big bucks, but I guarantee you the list won't be nearly as big if Dak doesn't show up this season. Next headline in the Cave on Times, love is on Green Bay's mind. Love is on Green Bay's mind. Rodgers will play good. He'll he'll have a good season. There's no doubt about that. But the Packers are ready to try out their new first-round pick. They drafted Jordan Love out of Utah State in the first round this past April. We all know that. It's very hard to draft a QB in the first round and not play him for two years. It's hard. And I think the organization is going to be eager to see what they have in him. And they're going to be itching to see him out on the field. And when you add that with the combination of Aaron Rodgers not being happy at all about this move and because of this move and not getting better offensively because of this move, they're not, they didn't go out and make the, the plays that they need to make, the, the wide receiver and, and, and the running back and the tight end help that they need to make. So when you put all that together, I think it's going to – Equal, Rodgers ready to leave, and Green Bay eager to find out what all the love is about. Now, I could be wrong here. If Rodgers goes and balls out, takes this team to the Super Bowl, and even wins it somehow, then, then Green Bay has no choice but to stay with Rodgers. They just can't ditch him in that. In, after that. The fans are, going to be, are already going to be outraged after they get rid of him, but in that case, they couldn't. But I just don't see that happening. I think the NFC North has gotten way better. And, and I think that after this season, it, it, it will be over. And, and Rodgers will be on the way out. And the Packers will be eager to see their new draft pick, Jordan Love. Next headline in the Cave on Times. No New England, no Belichick, no problem. No New England, no Belichick, no problem. Tom Brady answers the big debate, the million-dollar question that after 20 years in New England with the best coach of all time, can he go to another organization and have success as well? And he shows the world that he can. He shows the world that father time hasn't caught up with him just yet. And Tom Brady puts together a great season. I will even go far enough to say an MVP caliber season. He will lead the Bucs to the playoffs, and then he will see. we will see what happens there. I know many people believe that because he didn't look very good towards the end of the season last year, that that matters. But I don't see it happening. He has too many good weapons. It's by far the best supporting cast he has had on offense in a long, long time, if not the best supporting cast he has ever had. And the defense is going to be good. People are not realizing that. Todd Bowles is a great defensive coordinator. He's going to have that young defense ready to go. A lot of talent on that ball. Top five offense. Good head coach. And Brady is on a mission. And he's ready to show the world that he can do what he's been doing in New England away from New England and Bill Belichick as well. Next headline in the Cave on Times. Whatever Tom can do, I can do too. Whatever Tom can do, I can do too. Bill Belichick says, not so fast. Both sides can win this million-dollar question that everyone is talking about. But I, I, Bill Belichick, I can do it in an even better fashion. I've said this before on the podcast, but if Belichick can get this team 
This Patriot team, after losing Brady, then losing eight players to opt out because of the virus to the playoffs. I mean, uh, to, because of the virus. If he can get this team to the playoffs, it will be the greatest accomplishment of his coaching career. Not only did all of that cha- all of that change happen, but also he will have a QB in Cam Newton that plays a completely different style than what they have been doing for the last 20 years. When you put all that together, it's going to take coaching. It's going to take extraordinary coaching. The roster is weak. They really don't have that many good players on it. And look, I don't want to make this a, this a competition, but let's be real. That's what sports talk is all about. If both of these, Brady and Belichick, lead their teams to the playoffs, Belichick will have a more successful season in my eyes. Both are very impressive. But with this team, if Belichick can do that, and I believe he can, it will be something special. Last headline of the Kayvon Times is Carson sends Dallas home wincing. That's right. Carson sends Dallas home wincing. For the second year in a row, it's going to come down to Dallas and Philadelphia in in the NFC East. And for the second year in a row, Carson Wentz will outplay Dak Prescott and take the Eagles to the playoffs. Everybody knows that Dallas has the better roster, and it's not even close. The Eagles have some decent options on offense. I really like Miles Sanders. I think he's going to be a great help to Carson Wentz. He's a terrific running back that can catch the ball in the backfield. You know, he, he... they have two good tight ends in Dallas Goddard and, and Zach Ertz. Hopefully Deshaun Watson can stay healthy to open up the field for Wentz as the deep threat. But but they're lacking in, in receivers. There's no doubt about that. Those weapons are nothing compared to what Dallas has. Dallas is stacked from top to bottom on offense. But in the end, it's going to come down to Philadelphia having the better quarterback and the better defense. And Wentz will make the plays that need to be made. And the defense will make the stops that need to be made. And at the end of the day, that will be enough to send Dallas home. That will be enough. This is the GSMC Football Podcast. Thank you, everybody, for listening. The GSMC Football Podcast is brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I would like to ask that you please remember to subscribe to the show and write a nice review. That really helps us. Also, if you can, please follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Thank you, and have a great night. Have a great rest of your week. Enjoy some NBA and NHL playoffs. Enjoy the NFL practices, padded practices back. Sports are rolling. Things are going well. Stay safe, and we'll talk again soon. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play.